This call is now being recorded. I need to ask you if it's all right for me to record our conversation? Yes. Okay. Um, so what in the world happened? Well, <clears throat> around, um, let's see, March the 20th, um, I had like a little sore throat, <clears throat> coughing a little bit, and uh, I thought I was coming down with a cold or flu. So I was taking like Alka-Seltzer Plus, you know, Tylenol, you know, trying to fight it off. <clears throat> so um, I tried to cut grass, and all of a sudden I couldn't um, couldn't catch my breath. So my wife called um, uh, the hospital, and it was like a virtual type thing. And when they found out I had a temperature of like 104 <clears throat> in the uh, flu symptoms, they said that uh, they need me to come in. So, um, you know, I went in. And, um, you know, my wife drove me to the Atrium University, and I waited, I waited in the waiting room for like five minutes, and they, you know, took me in the back. They did a little blood test, and all of a sudden, you know, they kept me. So they told my wife that, you know, try to stay in contact, but she would have to leave because I couldn't, you know, get back in contact with her. <clears throat> so anyway, um, I found out that, um, my lungs were filling up. I had like double pneumonia. So I had to be put on a ventilator. And uh, I didn't know, but my wife said that they called because I had pulled up whatever was in my throat. I pulled it out. And uh, they ended up giving me some kind of drug where I was hallucinating. And they restrained my hands where I couldn't pull it out. And oh, you had a, was, um you were intubated, is that what you mean? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so uh, at that time, it was like touch and go. And uh, Dr. called my wife and told me that uh, that I was recovering. And uh, then, you know, I got in my own room and everything. And, you know, things started kind of improving a little bit. But I just didn't, you know, feel right. Um, and this was a, this was about how long into this after March? Uh, that was like uh, March twenty third. Okay. Wow. So uh, you know, every day they was you know giving me medicine and taking blood. It's not every day, and my sense of uh, smell and and taste wasn't that great. And plus, the hospital food I wasn't eating that much because I tried to. And I was getting on oxygen, and uh, I just thought it was over with because I was hearing stories where people who had the virus, you know, didn't make it. Matter of fact, my wife and I, we were ready to go to Singapore that, the month before that, and we heard about the virus. Then we, then we changed to a cruise in Italy, and then we heard about the thing in Italy, so we decided we weren't going anywhere. So at the end of February, um, I worked security at the CIAA, so I was around a lot of people. Oh, but, wow. Yeah. So, but at that time, people weren't talking about the virus, you know, down this way. <clears throat> and then I did, like, a little photo shoot. I, I do photography work. I went right. to a couple of pop parties and stuff. And uh, that's where I think I contracted it. I'm not 100% sure. But... um that's about it. And um, when I went home, um, I was like 45%. I was real weak. I still got tired quick. Had a cough. But all my vitals were good. No fever. And I had lost, like I said, 19 to 20 pounds. So my goal was to, you know, do what I can to, to get all the, way, all the way back healthy. And I had a virtual uh, doctor and a nurse to contact me every day to check my vital signs and ask if they have any problems. And I still had a cough, and I still had chills, but everything else was improving. So about a week and a half, because I ate like every three hours and drank about two protein drinks, I gained about 11 of the 19 back, and... I still couldn't, I could only do like three 
push-ups at first. I worked my way up to maybe 50. And um, I would try to do little stuff and still got tired. So I'm still healing. I <clears throat> had a lot of prayers. And I'm just grateful that, you know, I was spared at the time and, and didn't give up. But... Uh, Right. So you were, um, I'm just trying to look at the timeline. So you went in on May 20th. When did they say uh, that you were positive for COVID-19? On, um, on March 23rd. Okay. All right. Um, and you were hospitalized. What day did you come back from the hospital? Um, let's see. I'm looking at my notes now. I was discharged on uh, April 7th. Okay. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I didn't know what I told you or not, but um, I had a physical therapist. And um, when he came in, after laying down that long, I, I couldn't walk. My equilibrium was off, my balance was off, my leg muscles were weak. I was like a any old man trying to walk, and he gave me a sheet with um, probably eight exercises, like standing on one foot, uh, bending down, and walking around the room with stuff like that. And I would get up in the middle of the night and kept, you know, practicing and working out those exercises. Mm -hmm. And when he came back two days later, I was able to do them, <clears throat> and I got released the next day. So is your um, is your um, the problem that I hear in your throat? Is that still is that normal, or I'm just I'm assuming that you're just still uh, a little bit. Is your voice from the injury that you did when you pulled the innovation out, or? Well, um, the first week I couldn't really talk a real horse. And it gradually started getting a little better. But I still had that cough, which I do. It's getting better and better. Like, I couldn't probably carry on this conversation over a minute without coughing. Mm -hmm. So that's getting better. And um, I started walking around, you know, the neighborhood a little bit and getting on the treadmill. And my energy level and cardio is getting better. And... Um, Cause you're you're a how old are you, John? Uh, Sixty-two. Oh, you are. Good grief! You don't yep. like it. Um. All right. Uh, but you're a, overall you're a, a a very healthy body, right? Would you? Right. Uh, would you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah this thing, I, this thing knocked you out, right? It did. Yeah. So um. You're a retired I, firefighter, so, right? Right. And that was my goal. I said, as soon as I turn 50 and I'm still healthy, I said, I'm going to retire healthy. I said, I don't want no back problems, no respiratory problems. You know, I want to travel. And um, yeah. and this thing kind of, you know, knocked me back. And you wrestled. When when did you re – and you st you're still involved with that, is that right? Yeah. I, um, I wrestled in high school and college. And then um, – I had a, a, a AAU team. No, I, I coached at West Charlotte first, and then I joined the fire department. And then they allowed me to have like an AAU team. I coached a lot of wrestlers. And then um, when West Charlotte lost their wrestling coach about uh, six years ago, uh, they hired me to coach again, so I, I coached another three years. And I still do like camps and clinics every so often. But I'm still kind of involved, so I always kept myself in shape, and um, you know, did lift, you know, lift weights and did cardio, mm -hmm. and watched what I ate. So I was always a pretty healthy person. Um, so, were you ever worried worried for your mortality at any point during any of this? Yeah. Um, my my mother, she's kind of sick, and I was thinking about, man, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna die before my mom. And my son just got married 
two years ago, and I was thinking that I won't be able to see my grandkids. And I, I just cut the television off because, you know, on ESPN, there was only showing, like, old basketball games. Right. And when I would see that, I said, man, when that game came on, you know, I was doing this, I was healthy, and I could do this, and I was doing that. And then things come on television that's going to happen next year, you know, for the Panthers and the draft. And then I was thinking, I won't be here to see that. So the, the television kind of depressed me. I kept seeing things to remind me, you know, when I was healthy and good times. And then I was seeing things that's going to happen in the future. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to be here. Wow. Um, what about your, you're married, correct? Yeah. Okay. And, um, were you isolated when you were in the hospital? Were you able to see your wife? Nope. But no. so how long? Um, but they had a virt- they had a screen where we could see each other, talk to each other. And my wife said she came to see me, and I didn't even respond. She said my eyes were half were closed. Um, she said that uh, I had no idea that she was there. So. Um well, I'm sure that was a dumb question. I'm sure it was difficult for the entire family. So, um, um, John, if you don't mind, I'm gonna um, because I'm I'm gonna do one thing with this, and I'd like to also um, give your contact information to um, our news department, and um, I'm gonna with an Erica Bryant, if if that's all right with you. Yes, that's fine. Would that be all right? Can you give me your phone number? Yes, it's um, area code 704-506-3847. Okay, I am almost done, and I'm sorry to take so much time. And it it is uh, John Carruthers, right? Correct. Okay. Um, John, if the only other thing that – I I could really use to in conjunction with this is if you could get me um a photograph of yourself that would be uh, that would be great. Um I know you got a bunch online but I don't know if you've got something um more current um that I could use that would yeah, be super. I, okay, yeah, I'll take a picture. Okay. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, uh, the, fl- the floor I was on, it was all uh, for that disease. And I think the doctor said it was like maybe 40 something people on that floor. Wow. But um, he said that I was the first one to get out of there. Is that right? Yep. This thing has had you down for a while then, hasn't it? Yep. Um, it's curious that the CIAA at the end of February, um, and then you didn't start seeing symptoms for another three weeks, right? It was, uh, let's see, when did it? Yeah. The CIA, oh, yeah, CIAA is the February 26th or something like that. Yeah, 26th, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But right. I'm just... I'm just, you know, saying that I'm just kind of um, speculating because I was around so many different people. Right. And I can't think of anywhere else. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, I appreciate your time, and I don't want to take up too much more, but um, if you could, um, I'd appreciate it if you could send me a photo. We kind of go our – is uh, we kind of uh, landscape – shape if that's fine with it. if you can do that for me i'd appreciate it um, okay and um well, mike yeah go ahead uh one more thing that might be important like <clears throat> before i got sick my son called over here and said he couldn't smell and um uh, i asked him to go in the kitchen and open up a bottle of ammonia which he did and he said he couldn't smell it so i had him call the hospital and they asked a bunch of questions about his fever, um, you know, hard of breathing, and other things that's related to the disease. And they mm-hmm. told him that um, he's probably young enough to fight it off. Told him to quarantine himself. 
for about a week and a half, which he did, and um, his sense of smell came back. This so, was before you got sick or after? Before. Oh, wow. Okay. Huh. So, so that was all before you, that was all before March 20th, or a yes. week before March 20th, is that right? Right. All right, wow. And they told him to quarantine himself and he'd be okay. Yeah. Hmm. What about your wife? Is she, um, was she tested or? No, they, they did, um, ask her a lot of questions. Because, you know, we were still hanging around each other for about a week before, you know, that I know, you know, found out that I had it. So, you know, we made sure that she wasn't coughing or scratchy throat, fever. So we kind of like kept an eye on her too. And as today, she's still fine. Mm -hmm. But once I got out of the hospital, we did have to stay away. So I, we slept in separate bedrooms and stayed away from each other you know, uh, all that time until we got cleared from the hospital. Wow, well, like, that's, that's a old. lot, man. I know. You know, 14 days quarantine. Mm. Um, well, I, I really appreciate your time. I really do, and, and thanks for sharing this. And um, I will uh, likely write this up tomorrow. Um, I may hold the story depending on whether or not um, Erica can do a, um, a Zoom interview with you. Okay. Um, because when I say it's a good story, I don't mean that it's a good story. I mean, it's it's really interesting, and I think um, people might be interested in hearing it on a, on a, on a broader scale. Um, but I will uh, write this thing up tomorrow. Uh, I'll go ahead and include your uh, GoFundMe link within the story. Um, okay. And then we'll just go from there. There may be a, a photo or two that I might want to pull from your from your page, but I'll make sure it's okay with you before I do. Okay, sounds good. All right, all, all right, right, John. Thank you so much. All right, and thank you. Yes, sir. Bye bye. All right, bye bye.